Hi, Cody. Hi, Chippy. <laughs> you got a familiar face here. <laughs> um, I first just wanted to say um, thank you so much for doing this. It's really nice to be able to talk directly to you. Yeah, for sure. It's great to hear your voice finally. <laughs> um, so my first question, um, you've played roles in a lot of different time periods. And I was wondering if you had like a time period that you really liked or maybe if there was a time period that you haven't played a role in that you would like to. That's a great question. Um, yeah, I, I do love period stuff. I mean, because there is obviously a sort of sensibility around it. Um, I really enjoyed Lizzie Borden Chronicles. I, I felt like I really connected with that sort of more antiquated time. In terms of a period I'd love to do, I'd love to do fantasy. Like I'm a big fantasy nerd. That that Lord of the Rings series would be sweet to get on something like that that I haven't had a chance. I mean, outside of Rain, I had a small role on, but that almost doesn't count that I would like to do some some like full-on fantasy would be really fun, I think. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of leads into my second question. I know you said recently that... Um, you would love to play a role in the Star Wars universe. And I was wondering if you would rather play a hero or a villain. Ooh, in Star Wars. It's <laughs> funny. I mean, I, I was always partial to the Rebel Alliance. Like, I, I, am, I, I am notoriously an underdog in my own life, I feel. So I've always sort of have a connection to, to the Rebels that way. But, I mean, the Star Wars universe, there's just a lot of room in terms of bounty hunters and... Um, spice runners like smugglers things like that so i don't know i think i would want to i i couldn't say if it's necessarily a hero or a villain but i would like to inhabit that sort of world of tatooine whether it's jabba's palace or like be a character in the moss eisley cantina so maybe it is like a bounty hunter character or some rogue jedi yeah. or something like that maybe not be... necessarily someone good or bad but somebody who has a little more you know, nuance to their character. Definitely. Yeah, some sort of an anti-hero, maybe. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And I think that there is room for that in the Star Wars world that, I mean, even someone like Han, for example, was at first very kind of self-interested. Mm, uh, that's true. A little morally ambiguous, maybe. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. um, my, my last question, maybe you kind of already answered it, but um, if, the Umbrella Academy continues with Klaus and Dave's story, what would you like to see for them? Yeah, I'd mentioned this before that I, I, it would be nice to sort of see it. I think everyone feels the same way to see it more fully realized that it does feel like it's this fleeting missing piece for Klaus's character um, being away from Dave. So it would be nice to see that realized in some way. And yeah, I think in relation to Klaus's character more, it would be interesting to see, you know, Klaus have to uh, bring Dave back or something, you know, like something something that, that we see giving Klaus some agency in connection with Dave, I think would be really, um, would, would tie a bow nicely on, on their relationship for me. Yeah, it would kind of be like a redemption for Klaus, I think, if he was able to save Dave. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, you're right that in that moment, I think it's it's not necessarily too that he's obviously in the love of his life. But you're right. There's there's maybe some guilt with Klaus that he he feels like he could have, have done something given his powers. So, yeah, he probably has like survivor's guilt that Dave was the one who died. And he probably feels like he was more deserving of it or something. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. that would be I would love to see that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would, it would, you're right, it would be like a nice, a nice arc for Klaus's character for sure. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for answering my questions. It was really great to talk to you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you for all the love on, on Twitter <laughs> as well. You're such a vocal supporter. And uh, I appreciate well, that your, your goofiness lines up with mine too, with your, <laughs> your goat post and things like that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you appreciated the, the Goaty Ray Thompson thread. Um, <laughs> Yeah, our, our sense of humor is definitely in lockstep there. So you're, you're good. You're in good company here. I'm glad you appreciated it. Um, thank you so much and have a great night. Yeah, you're very welcome. You too.
Oh, hi, Kalem, by the way, too. Kalem and I have never actually met, but I can see he's on the chat as well. So I figured I should use this opportunity to say, from Dave to Dave, station to station and Dave to Dave. Hello. Hi. Yeah, sorry. My sister came in the room when it was... Um, so I just have a question because I'm going to have to leave soon. Okay, but, yeah, of um, course. If you could, you know, since the show has, you know, a lot of different types of personalities with the characters, if you could play any other character, who would it be? Hmm. Well, funny enough, I actually auditioned for Luther. Didn't get it, obviously, but oh. that, rolls in, that rolls in good hands. Um, I don't know. There's so many other good, cool to work for, like, the commission as well. Just be some sort of assassin. I know, I don't know, maybe it's a character that doesn't exist yet. Um, I don't know. It's so hard, that question, because when you see someone else who has played the role the way they have, it's hard for me to sort of see myself in it because now I can't unsee someone else playing it. But in the universe of the show, yeah, maybe playing someone as part of the time commission or, or I don't know, we'll see this, what the Sparrow Academy looks like, or maybe one of these other, with these other kids that were around the world that have powers potentially. So we'll see. True. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're very welcome. No worries. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Step right up. Whoever wants questions, fire away. Oh, I guess it means it's me time, huh? Yeah, step up. Come on up. All right, Caleb's here, so he's going to hear me recycle this question. Caleb, I hope you're reading Dune right now, by the way. That's a that's a last space reference. Oopsie. Ooh. Uh, Hi. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for interrupting you. I have one quick question, and then I will give it to you, Nico. The, yeah, that, that, that's fine. Okay. So this question is recycled, and everyone who was here last time is going to hear me recycle this. Oops, I'm not creative. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> what was it like to step into the Umbrella Academy universe as a character who wasn't in the comics? Obviously, when I asked Caleb, it was following you. But you had absolutely nothing on Dave except for the script. So what was it like for you to kind of build his character in your own well, right? The world is so comic-focused. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, I honestly didn't read the comic beforehand. Um, I know that the character was based on like a Vietnamese woman that Klaus meets actually and has a kid with her, if, if my memory serves me. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I have free reign that way. And it was really left to the writers. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I just worked with what was on the page and, and what I sort of felt was there and, and the sort of the context of the relationship. And that's the the day that ended up on screen, I guess. So, yeah, it's nice. It's nice though to to have that freedom, I guess. Yeah, I just I always like to ask this question because the world is obviously so heavily drawn from what the comics put into place, mm -hmm. and you stepped in as a character who was pretty much entirely brand new. Because, like you said, in mm -hmm. the comic, a Vietnamese woman who Klaus might or might not have fathered a child to. <laughs> That was a that was an interesting situation. So you yeah. had so much freedom coming into the character, and I just wondered, like, I guess how that was for you. Again, though, like, um, it's funny because Dave has gotten so huge, but uh, I was yeah, I was on set for four days. Uh, a lot of it is me laying on the floor bleeding and stuff too. So uh, yeah, for for me, it's it's more you know obviously doing research for the period, but when you're in the moment, it's just trying to connect with what's there really was was the big thing i don't know that i really had any kind of intentions um in terms of like outcomes i think for dave uh i think that that you you sort of just want to play the scene with what's there and if there's little surprises that come up it's great and i think there were little moments um with a role like that you you just kind of got to 
sort of sorry if this sounds terrible but throw shit against the wall a little bit and and see if it sticks so i feel it came across in the performance and again though i think that a great part of this role because it's so small is that people can have their own interpretations of dave and it's beautiful sort of that this character so small and it's got so big that there is a lot of these gaps that that you know people can can put on what they they think about dave and and that belongs to them and that's great so yeah hopefully that hopefully that answers your question yeah absolutely thank you so much yeah you're very welcome <laughs>